Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to another Common Ground on the Hill concert series from the Mid-Maryland Folklife Center in Westminster, Maryland, on the campus of McDaniel College. Our musicians tonight are a father and son team, Ken and Brad Kalodner from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Ken has been on the string band music scene for a number of years with uh, his group Helicon and uh, a lot of other projects, especially with his son, Brad who uh, has forged quite a career for himself. Uh, you can find Brad pretty much every day on bluegrasscountry.org as a, uh, a wonderful MC and uh, disc jockey. And he is now sitting on the board of the IBMA, uh, which is the Organization for Bluegrass Music. And um, he has his own group as well, Charm City Bluegrass. But tonight it's a special night for father and son. And we encourage you to uh, you know, get relaxed, get your favorite beverage in hand, and listen to some great music, and also to uh, reach into your wallet and uh, donate to the tip jar to help these musicians. Uh, this money all goes to the musicians. Common Ground doesn't receive any of it. Uh, and, um, you know, we all need to do our share in keeping live music together and see where we come out at the end of this pandemic. So enjoy yourselves. And uh, remember to tune into all of the Common Ground concerts uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, there are a number of them there, and that, that number will continue to grow. So thanks for tuning in, and here's some great music from Ken and Brad Kalodner. Howdy, everybody. Welcome into my Hamden living room here in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Brad Kalodner. We got Ken Kalodner and Alex Lacklemont to play some tunes for you this evening. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Sit back, everybody. relax, and enjoy the music. It's called Chattanooga. Great old time fiddle tune. Hope you're all doing well out there. Enjoying this lovely Saturday evening. Thanks to Common Ground on the Hill for having us play this virtual concert. Thanks to Walt Michael, Maria, and all the good folks over there at Common Ground. We are good friends with Common Ground on the Hill. We've taught there for many years and uh, performed at the concerts and the festival for quite a while. And it's, uh, it's a nice 
treat to be able to share our music with the Common Ground family. We're going to do one here that's uh, a tune that feels like the theme for the year. It's called I've Endured from the great songwriter Ola Bell Reed.
tunes called Coleman's March and Snake River Rio. We recorded that on our album Swift House, which came out back in uh, 2017. And we have a new album out. New as of a year ago. We released it on March 13th, 2020, that fateful week when we all uh, had our lives dramatically changed with uh, the appearance of COVID in our world. And uh, the three of us have been able to make lots of music together this past year, despite not being able to play concerts with live audiences. We've done lots of streaming events, and we've done our bi-weekly Baltimore Old Time Jam, and we've uh, been playing these tunes that we recorded on the album Stony Run, which came out in March 2020. And uh, this is one of the tunes that's on the record. It's called Black Eyed Susie. And I picked up my gourd banjo here. My father's got his hammered imbira. It's a, this creature. a variation okay. on the hammered dulcimer with steel rods Ooh. instead of strings. It's got quite a different tone. Ah. And uh, as you'll hear, a really interesting blend with these three instruments. Um, perhaps the only trio in the world with this combination of instruments. <laughs> I never heard I'm, I'm probably certain of that. <laughs> <laughs> I would be shocked probably if there certain. were another combination. If there is, uh, I'd love to hear it. Yes, I'd would. be very I'd curious to hear. to hear. We should get together and hang out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this lonely trio of unusual instruments will play a tune here called Black Eyed Susie. Thank you. 
Here's an original tune of mine that I wrote uh, while uh, thinking about the vine that grows on the pergola in my backyard. It's a beautiful wisteria vine, and it's actually blooming this time of year. And it's a, a gorgeous vine that is providing shade for me in the summer, and I was just inspired one night to uh, write a tune with this beautiful wisteria vine hanging overhead. So think of maybe a favorite plant of yours. <laughs> and... Uh, Imagine it, close your eyes, and enjoy this, uh, this melody here that I wrote that appears on our new record, Stony Run. It's called Wisteria. Wisteria from our new album, Stony Run. All right, it's great to have Ken and Brad Kolodner here with us at the Common Ground Concert Series. And uh, gosh, you know, these father-son teams are powerful, wonderful things. Um, <laughs> I, I, my first memory of you, Ken, was meeting at a dulcimer festival, I believe, in Connecticut. The Autumn Hills and, Dulcimer Festival. Yep. Yeah. I and, remember that um, well. I was I was a little nervous meeting Walt Michael. 
Well, I, I was nervous being me, you know. <laughs> that must be hard. <laughs> no, no, I remember meeting you guys, and it was just a wonderful trio, and, you know, you and Robin. And, and um, Chris Norman. Yeah. And Chris. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, because I think we, we sort of came from different schools of dulcimerism. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I came from the Spence school, and I, I don't know what your school was, but it was you were playing a different kind of an instrument. That's true. I was, you know, I was kind of like a, you know, Malcolm Daglish, kind of thinking in those terms. But, but you know, I was a fan of Bill Spence, and we shared something in common, which was we both played this left-hand lead style. Right. And uh, so that was something that uh, Bill and I found out. Oh, I do that too. Yeah. So we had a lot of fun chatting about that. Yeah, it was very, you know, I, of course, learned from Bill, and but yeah. I lead with my right, and we would play the same exact notes, and it would look like two different tunes being played. Right, uh, a exact opposites, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, that was great to meet you there. And then uh, when I moved down to Maryland from New York State, um, I connected with you immediately. And I remember coming to your house and uh, um, borrowing some hammer dulcimers for classes. Yes. And uh, I seem to remember this little guy walking around the house who happened to be the guy with the beard now. Right. Yeah. 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 31 years old. Right. <laughs> Which leads me to the, to the question, Ken, what was your, what got you into the music, um, you know, when you were a young guy? Well, so I started out with the, the fiddle in 1978, I decided it just looks like so much fun when people got together and played. I went to the Deer Creek Fiddlers Convention and I watched people play and I said, man, those people have so much fun playing together. I wow. hope someday that I could play an instrument so I could play with people. I didn't play anything as a kid. So I grabbed a fiddle uh, when I was 23, I guess, and um, after college. And uh, wow. just started to teach myself by listening to records. You remember those round things, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, got County Old Time Fiddle Classics, Volume 1 and 2, and just would, I would turn it, the, the, the uh, speed down to 16 and a half yep. or whatever it was, you know, half yep. speed, so I could, like, learn the tunes. And then I started playing. And, wow. and a couple years later, I grabbed the Hammer Dulcimer, and there were, there were players like, John McCutcheon, Bill Spence, and uh, this other guy, Walt Michael, uh, who I listened to, and I said, I want to be like them someday. And uh, and so, yeah, Sam Herman was another one, Chris right. Hall, string band. So th they were my early influences, you included, as uh, the players I looked to as uh, Crittin Hollow String Band. There it is. This is Look actually your that. old record. Wow. From uh, way back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look at that. I, 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 I actually have a record player. My parents don't have a record player, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> Somewhere in I have, there. Um, you have this a, is like old Charlie Poole. I don't know. You These have a Paul like Michael some... one in there. Bob I might. Bill. I might. Yeah, let me see. I, it's, it, we'll, we'll find it. Well, you know... <laughs> It, I mean, that's fascinating to me. You, you chose the easiest instrument of all to learn, the fiddle. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, for, for those of you seeing this concert, the fiddle is the hardest instrument to play. I had not a clue that how hard it was. I just said, it just looks, it doesn't look that hard. You know, <laughs> I should be able to do that. Pick it up and like contort your body and then do this weird thing. And uh, so, yeah, so I started uh, playing music with people uh, you know, pretty quick, like six months into it, I was, I was dragged onto stage and started playing. Could you find the wall, Mike? No, but I mean, Bill? I know, know I have it. But there's, I have, I have my, my, my parents' old record collection. There's all kinds of like old <laughs> square dance calls, you know. So I actually, yeah. I listened to records last night. I um, yeah, I, I love listening to those old records. Great stuff. I actually got a record player. I do. So, so Brad, you grew up in a house where your dad was playing and his trio was happening and. Um, did you immediately, like at age three, start picking up instruments around you, or were you into rejecting your parents, and um, you finally had a moment, uh, a come to Jesus moment with? with well, the music? there was, uh, there's actually a great video floating around of me wearing a diaper. Um, <laughs> I think I was about three years old or two, and banging away on the. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, I would say. I was a virtuoso from age two. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you if you watch that video, I'm just like it's wailing. A, it's pretty it funny. Right at the end of it, you know, like I fall right over. Right. I'm like playing so hard that I just fall backwards <laughs> into the chair. I'm like on a chair so I can stand and reach the dulcimer. Yeah. Um, there's a video out there like on my Instagram or somewhere, maybe on Facebook, uh, from I don't know, probably 1992 or something. Um, 
But I, uh, no, I, I actually, beyond that and uh, learning a couple of tunes on Hammer Dulcimer as a kid, um, just for my own curiosity, I didn't really get into the music until I was uh, basically a senior in high school. I picked up the banjo. Really? Music huh. camp, picked up the banjo at a camp similar to Common Ground, uh, one up in uh, Maine called Metal Arc. And I mm -hmm. took a workshop from a great banjo player named Richie Stearns. Oh, yeah, Richie. I fell in love with the Clawhammer style of banjo and... I think being around the music for all those years, the music was kind of seeping in. It's similar to how when I hear my sister play, she doesn't really play much music, but when she does pick up an instrument, I can tell that her ears are really fine-tuned to this kind of yeah. music. And she knows what it's supposed to yeah, sound like. Yeah, we all yeah. kind of know what it's supposed to sound like because we were just around it, whether we liked it or not, like all the time. Right. The lessons in the living room, um, you know, from as long as I can remember, it was just part of our daily lives. We finally built a, a music studio outside of the house, took over the garage and converted it just to get the lessons out of the house. Otherwise, yeah. you'd, you know, fiddle on hammered all the lessons right in the living room and right. kids running amok. So is it, that's that's not where you are now. You're in the house or are you in the studio? We're in Brad's house. Yeah, Brad's house. house. Yeah, yeah. I, live, uh, I live in the Hamden neighborhood of Baltimore. Yep. And I, I, I got this house almost seven years ago now and I host house concerts right here in this exact space we're sitting in and square dances in the living room and i've had musical housemates over the years from uh the band charm city junction and and uh, other other folks well, you, uh, it's, it's been a musical the... house and and not too far from where i i, I was born over on the other side of this neighborhood and on beach right. avenue in hamden in hamden where my where my father and, and uh bought a house you know oh, you were probably in your 20s too right yeah at the same time in my late 20s yeah, yeah so I've, yeah. I've definitely followed a somewhat similar path with regards yeah. to, uh, well know, that's great yeah, you're, sort of the, you're like the Bascom Lamar Lunsford of the the new generation. You could say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I know that you 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 both play in different configurations. Um, why don't you talk what it, about what it feels like to play with each other? You know, is that that must be a great bond, and a, it must be a heck of a lot of fun. It is. It is a ton of fun because. Um, you know, I never expected, uh, uh, going back to when Brad, prior to age 17, uh, Brad really was not showing great interest in playing an instrument and playing the music that, you know, that I loved. And uh, so that all changed when he hit 17 and picked up the banjo. But all through college, I still looked at it as something fun we would do together and uh, not something we would do professionally together also. Um, so, um, you know, that all changed as Brad, uh, after he finished college, he was, uh, his major was in uh, television and broad broadcast journalism. And, um, I, we thought you know, his mom and dad, uh, thought that he, that's what he would go into. But I was also thinking, you know, he might like to play music and he did. And, uh, so he can speak for himself about that. But for me, it was, uh, it was, it was a great turn of events when Brad decided, uh, or we, it kind of, I don't know if it was a real a decision. It just kind of organically happened. Yeah. And we started to play yeah. together and it felt really good. It was fun and people liked it. You know, it's, it's, I think it's a, a, a compelling little story, you know, to have father and son. People like to see that. And uh, we really enjoyed playing music together. And then we have brought in over the years other people that we enjoyed playing with. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and now have recorded four CDs and just finished our fourth CD released in time for the pandemic, the beginning of the <laughs> pandemic, March 13th, 2020. Great timing. Right. <laughs> the latest recordings called Stony Run. And uh, yeah, so um, that's kind of it for me. I yeah, just, I mean, you know. in the grand scheme of things, you know, father, son teams or parent, child relationships and music. You know, there's a long lineage and history of that as this music's been passed down from generation to generation. Um, and, and when you look at the broader landscape of music, it's, it is relatively unusual these days. Um, but honestly, it's never been anything that, um, I mean, I acknowledge now that it's something that's very special and unique. But for me, in the beginning, it just felt normal and felt like yeah. the way that was most clear and present for me at the time when I was picking up banjo and learning these tunes from YouTube and the, the occasional lesson. Uh, I was like, well, my dad plays fiddle, might as well play with him. And like, he's got all these tunes. Like, it just felt like a, a very logical and natural thing to do to play music together. Um, but there's definitely a, a jump from, 
you know, jamming at the house and, and just playing casually to then performing. playing concerts and performing. And I right. think my, my father was sort of pulling me up on the stage, you know, where he was playing with other people. And there were some scenarios in which I, you know, I, I was you know, pretty new to the music and perhaps a bit of nepotism, uh, you know, yeah, I was so a, a, bit, a bit green, you know, with the music, <laughs> bit, yeah. but, um, but being, you know, put into those scenarios where I was playing in front of hundreds and, you know, perhaps thousands. thousands of people, um, like within the first few years of playing, um, that really hooked me on that feeling. And I figured, well, why start from scratch and like start my own band? And like, why not just like play with my dad and, and, you know, unpack the, yeah. I think part of the excitement, honestly, this gets into the nitty gritty a bit, but I think part of the excitement of playing with my father, um, we obviously love playing banjo and fiddle together and playing twin fiddles and stuff, but I think having the banjo and hammered dulcimer combination and sort of forging some new territory with the groove ideas and there really aren't other bands out there that have that specific combination um, right. frequently. So that's, I think musically, it was really a, an exciting time and continues to be, whereas we write new tunes and come up with new material. So it's, it's a fruitful musical collaboration in addition to being a familial bond and a comfort of, of playing with the, you know, someone yeah. you're related to, right. but. Well, you know, the, um, nuance. the, one of the, problems with the hammer dulcimer if, if there is such a thing is that it sort of can sort of create its own genre and um uh, i mean there used to be i don't know 25 30 years ago there was there was a button going around that had you know the the strike going through hammer dulcimers yeah. and it was in the old time community no yeah. hammer dulcimers well um you know there was sort of a good reason for that and that was that the hammer i, I call the hammer dulcimer the, the typewriter of traditional music you know you're just really really tempted to play a lot of notes and and um but you know what ken has done and what others of us have done is work on bringing bringing that instrument into an old time or a bluegrass setting and making it work right you know, well that's that's especially what i appreciated in those early days of, of folks like sam herman you and uh, uh you know uh, bill spence uh, the, the band context, seeing right. a hammer dulcimer work in a band and, and to be able to play with other instruments and get along and not compete. Right. And, and I think one of the things that, uh, that uh, Brad was alluding to is that we kind of thought of ourselves as doing the banjo fiddle thing and thinking, well, banjo hammer dulcimer might not work uh, as well because of all the, the notes right. and all the overtones and all of that. And what we, what we ended up embracing is the kind of the, the trying to find a rhythmic space together um, right. and, you know, finding that matching the, the, the groove of the banjo with the hammered dulcimer and, and really embracing the, uh, the dampers with the hammered dulcimer too. Right. Uh, and, and, and that, that sound and then bringing the gourd banjo and then we've brought in this hammered and bira. And uh, so it's been, it's been super fun to, to, to explore all those different uh, combinations in, in addition to fiddle banjo and also twin fiddles because uh, right. in fact we, we uh, uh, taught a fiddle banjo uh, a fiddle a twin fiddle workshop earlier this week and um, and that was a lot of fun that's uh, you know our, our second instruments basically right. working those together and we do that in concert as well well I know in my band format that's always my favorite you know if I, if I have a fiddle I want I want two <laughs> right and you all, that's right you always had two fiddles right that's tough yeah um, yeah, well, it, we're really happy to have you guys uh, here as part of our concert series, and we, we we remind the audience that no matter when you see this, you can add to um, the living room that you see. You know, let these guys buy a new rug or <laughs> Brad, buy, Brad buy a new rug. Right. Yeah. Hit the, yeah, I'm on my own over here. Yeah, <laughs> poor, poor Brad, you got to hit that tip jar. Um, it really is important uh, that we continue to support music because the. the we don't know where all this is going to end up in terms of the way things are going to be once everybody's healthy. I mean, yeah. this is a change. It's yeah. a sea change. Um, and uh, it's, so it's important for the listening public to be part of it and to be supportive. So yeah. thanks, guys. And, uh, you know, if you decide to have a band argument, you know, um, I don't know how you do that one. <laughs> If, well, the, as Brad once said, the band the band can never break up. Right. If yeah. if you need a family counselor, just let me know. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but thanks, hey, thanks, for, thanks for having us. 
And thanks for all you do, and, and thanks for uh, yeah. one of the first camps I ever taught at was Common Ground. Many, yes, many years back, so it's a big part of my musical, uh, yeah, you know, experience. Over Great, there. So it was actually for, yeah, it was the first camp, uh, not the first camp, but I taught at the very first uh, Common Ground. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. How many years now? Twenty-seven. Congratulations. I, I mean, I, I can't count that high. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all take care, and I look forward to your next tune. All, All right. right. Thanks. Paul. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. Okay. Let me pick the energy back up a bit here with a tune on the gourd banjo. When my dad and I first started playing together, um, we uh, we kind of honed in on the groove of the the dulcimer and the banjo together. There's a, a lot to explore. And then bringing in Alex, who recorded on our second album, Skipping Rocks. And uh, it's been fun to make music with Alex and, and uh, bring in some of the percussive, the groovy drive that Alex plays with. And uh, we're going to do this one called Wild Bill Jones. It's a good one to get up and move around. One, two, three. pumping out there yeah virtual music attendee world <laughs> we got time for one more set of tunes thanks for participating in this virtual concert thanks so much to common ground for having us and uh yeah it's really nice to chat with walt and catch up and uh common ground family is dear to our hearts especially here in maryland oh, yeah. one of the very first places i ever taught a banjo workshop back I in the day. The, yeah, I taught at the very first Common Ground. Way back. Way back. I've known Walt for years. We're going to do a medley of 
tunes here that we like to end a lot of our shows with. It's known as the Big Set on our set list. It's a collection of four tunes, some old time chestnuts, as they like to say. Liza Jane, Old Yellow Dog, and Sandy Boys, followed up by a tune that I wrote called Bradley's Tune, the very first tune I ever wrote. The best way to stay in touch. I wrote a tune called Brad's Tune. I know. I changed my name (laughs) to Bradley. Well, my name was originally Bradley. It still is, legally, of course. And to my family and close friends. Anyone who knew me before I was age 18 calls me Bradley. But I went off to college and changed my name to Brad. We've got Ken Kolodner here on the hammer dulcimer and fiddle. This is Alex Lacomo on the upright bass. And the guitar, I'm Brad Kalodner playing you the banjos and some fiddle. Thanks again for having us. to uh, all of you who have tipped and donated for this concert. It's a free show, and I uh, appreciate your contributions to making these virtual shows possible. We right over there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Coming around. Here's an old tradition called fiddlesticks. Thank you.
everybody. Keep it down out there. Keep it down. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks, everybody. Good night. I've been talking in my sleep, counting troubles instead of counting sheep. Where the years went, I can't say. I just turned around, they've gone away. I was sifting through the layers of dusty books and faded papers. They tell the story I used to know It was one that happened so long ago It's gone away in yesterday And I find myself on the mountainside Where the rivers change direction
What a great concert from Ken and Brad Kalander. We're indebted to them for being part of the Common Ground on the Hill concert series. We uh, encourage you to refer friends to this concert. It will continue to live on our YouTube channel as all of our concerts do. And uh, spread the word and remember please to donate to Ken and Brad by way of the donations uh, accessibility that you see here on the channel. That uh, money goes to common ground, but all of it goes to the performers. We all have to do our part in keeping live music alive. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you at the next concert.